I need you to take a moment, look down, and take stock of what you're wearing. If you happen to be wearing the color green 200 years ago, you were probably dying. Dun, dun, dun. Hey guys, Dallas here. It is vlog every day in April, day four, and today we're talking about this very deadly color that I am wearing right now. Back in the 1800s, gas lighting was slowly replacing candle lighting. So in a Victorian era, during all of these balls at night, the rooms were brighter and the ladies wanted bright colors to be the peacock of the night or whatever. So in 1814, the Wilhelm Dye and White Lead Company invented a new green dye. It was brighter, it was bolder, it was luscious. Everybody loved it and wanted it and had to have it. They compared it to the color emerald green. So it was flying off the shelves, but there was one problem. To make this striking color, they had to add arsenic. Now, if you don't know, arsenic is kind of a poison. And by kind of a poison, I mean a super deadly poison. It won't kill you straight off unless you take it in a large dose. But if it's in things you're wearing, it will cause problems for you, which will eventually lead to death. For example, there's documentation of an upper echelon lady buying a pair of gloves with this new green dye and her hands being covered in blisters and sores from the arsenic. Because the thing is, if the dye was not sealed properly, which it usually wasn't, the sweaty palms could make the dye run onto your hands and the arsenic would seep into your skin. This was not only true of ladies' fabric and wear, this color was taking Victorian England by storm, and so it was being used in wallpapers and carpeting, and so even babies were dying from this thing because they were, the, they were in these rooms where the wallpaper and carpeting arsenic field stuff was. And ironically, unfortunately ironically, when people became ill from this arsenic-based dye, they would be put into the rooms in which the arsenic was. So that would eventually lead to their, their death. However, it was way worse for the factory workers who was working with this dye. It was this one death which ended up being renowned and known all over England. It was a 19 year old woman who was working with the dye. Her, the whites of her eyes ended up turning green. She was vomiting green. And before she died, she even said that she was seeing things in green. People started investigating these workshops. They would find workers who had bruises and lesions and sores over their faces and hands. Now, doctors knew about this. There's documentation as early as 1857 about, quote, the great deal of slow poisoning going on in Great Britain. There were illustrations of skeletons wearing green dresses and the Times even covered it. Did this stop people from wearing the green dye fabric, blah, blah, blah? Of course. Of course not. One, people just loved it. Two, the production sales were so high that of course no one wanted to stop selling it. And three, there were people who were just in straight denial. They, just, they didn't believe that it was the cause of all the deaths. Or two, they thought if, if they didn't lick the fabrics that they would be okay. There were the people who just refused to believe the doctors because science can never be real, of course. So it took until 1895, 80 years after this green dye was invented, for regulations to be put in place at the factories. And you would think, oh, people would just stop buying green dye things. But, you know, pfft, humans. So I suppose the moral of the story is inventions are never great the first time around. They can be quite deadly, actually. And two... Humans have always been vain, stubborn, and stupid for millennia, but we're still here, so yay? Maybe? Thank goodness this wasn't made 200 years ago. Well, that's all for me. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!